Erez, the only passenger crossing that remains open between Gaza and Israel. For many critically ill Palestinians, this crossing is a tenuous lifeline. It's a passage to essential medical treatment in Israel. With Gaza blockaded, only a fortunate few are now able to get through here. Each day, several families turn up, hoping to collect their special travel permits. Permits that often mean the difference between life and death. The Israelis are sensitive about who and what is filmed here. These patients are desperate. According to the Israeli Organization of Physicians for Human Rights, patients from Gaza are increasingly asked to make an impossible choice, to become collaborators with Israeli intelligence or to remain in Gaza without medical treatment. Majed al-Mughalawi is crossing with his young daughter, who needs urgent treatment. He explains that a previous permit to get her to an Israeli hospital took six months to secure. For this family, at least, there's a ray of hope. Not so for 27-year-old Khitam Fuad al-Bashar. She's suffering from a life-threatening anemic condition. She had received permission to be transferred to an Israeli hospital. But that was before the interrogation. I asked Hitam about her prospects of receiving the treatment she urgently needs. In Gaza, informers are used to gather information for Israel to help target militant leaders, including those from Hamas. This man, Saeed Sayam, the Hamas number three, was killed in a targeted operation during the war in January, which likely involved local Palestinian informers. Several of Gaza's hospitals have been badly damaged and its medical services are in tatters. So Palestinians who are seriously ill have little choice but to seek treatment outside, Israel being the best option. Palestinians accuse Israel of playing a grim game with the lives of their sick. Those who dare to collaborate with Israel risk being killed, but to refuse may also mean a death sentence. One man who knows this only too well is Saeed Abu Shamala, who lost his brother Khaled last year.
Wael's tiny baby boy Rajab was recently born with a congenital heart defect. His only hope now is to get an urgent operation in Israel. The family are deeply concerned because another child of theirs with a similar condition died last year. We visited this family over two days and on the second morning the child's doctor, Furajat Awida, was confident that they would travel to Israel. And on the phone they told me, they told me that he has an invitation for today. Some time later, Nofak's permission had yet arrived. Dr. Oweda again speaks to her colleagues over the border in Israel. They're all in agreement that the child needs treatment immediately. Wael waits anxiously. But what time do they think could be? What time? I wait, I don't know. It's, she it's not for sure. Maybe 90% today she will leave. He will leave the child. We told Wael we would go and wait for them at the border crossing, as little Rajab would be brought by an ambulance. We waited and waited, but two hours later, there was no sign of them. I asked my colleague to check what was happening. They refused the case. I don't know. They were denied access. They were told, don't come, there is a problem. And they were not told what the problem is. So he can't take the, the child into... Yeah, they, but the doctor told them she's going to try again with the administration of the hospital to check what reasons are behind this. Was he upset? Yeah, very upset. He barely managed to speak up. Little Rajab did eventually manage to cross to Israel. But for hundreds left behind, there are no guarantees.